Hey, what's up YouTube? I just did a video on how to simplify your owl painting without using external tools and just do it really quick. One thing I wasn't sure of is if some of my extensions like Canvas Zoom were actually giving me additional functionality that not everybody had. So I wanted to quickly put this tutorial together to show you how to install that tool and it's like super, super, super easy. And I also want to show you what it can do. I also want to show you another tool that will allow you to do some masking and some additional functionalities similar to what you would do in Photoshop or MS Paint. This is going to give you the ability to layer images and you can do it directly inside Stable Diffusion. So let me show you this other way as well with this extension. First, let's install the Canvas app and this is going to be super easy. Don't blink. Just open up your Stable Diffusion, go to your extension tab and then click on the available sub tab. Now click on the big orange button that says load from. Now you just have to click inside the search bar, do control F and then type in the word Canvas. Canvas Zoom should be the only thing that pops up. So go ahead and click on the install button all the way to the right side and then it should take about like five seconds or so. And then as always, go to the installed sub tab over here at the top left and then make sure everything is checkmarked and then click on the big button, check for updates. Now click on the big orange button, click apply and then restart UI. Now we got to test it out by uploading an image to MP painting and then press S while hovering over the image and the image should turn into a full size image. Or you can right click on the image and you'll have a bunch of options like fit to screen, which was the S shortcut that we just did. So that's it. You now have the app Canvas Zoom and you should have all the functionality that I had when I was doing the out painting tutorial. I'll also leave the GitHub page for the Canvas Zoom uh, from Rich Robert too. This is where you can watch a short video on all the features this tool will give you, but you actually don't need to go to this website. We did it all through Stable Diffusion's extension tab. Now another thing that someone asked me was how do you extend upwards or downwards and it's pretty easy actually. With the image in the image to image tab just go ahead and click on the edit icon here which is that little pencil up here to the top right of the photo. Now scroll down until you get enough space whether you want it above or below the picture just get enough space. Now when you scroll down the picture is going to get smaller but it's also going to get stretched so this is very important. You're going to have to click on the image and watch it change size because it should automatically adjust the aspect ratio to, to lock it into a normal size so it's not stretched out or warped. If you don't do this, it's going to look funny and then you're going to wonder what happens. So make sure you click on the image and it should adjust accordingly. Another thing I wanted to mention was that there's an auto resolution button here that I was using with the height and width button. Someone asked me about this, but um, I, I thought this was like normal for stable diffusion with one of the updates. However, it's hard to keep track of what extension did what or what update did what. But if you don't have that button, you can just drag the height and width sliders till the red box is over the image. Um, see the red box here is changing size. So just drag it left and right until you can get the size that fits around your image. And also note that you you can't be in edit when you're doing this or the red box won't even show up. Now I also saw a comment that someone preferred using paint to create a mask. Well I got some good news for you because we're going to install another extension that will actually let you do that inside Stable Diffusion. It's also going to have more advanced functionality. So it's going to have the ability to do things like remove background with a single click and it's also like a magic select tool. It's going to have different types of masking tools. You can do some Photoshop like activities and you can also do the layering for non-destructive image editing. So that's really actually where the magic happens when it comes to photo editing. I actually plan to do another video to do some texture transfers between like a smooth texture to another texture. For example, if you wanted to add like real pores onto a subject or some colorization techniques, like if you wanted to color the eyes or the hair and you didn't want to roll the dice with stable diffusion, you want it to be perfect the right color in the right place. I did some really old videos on this uh, using GIMP, but uh, this tool has a lot of those major tools and it has the ability to do those same things. All right, now let's install Photopea. It's pretty simple. And it, if you don't know, Photopea is a website that actually offers these free services and it's a pretty powerful tool and it has a lot of Photoshop and GIMP and Krita type of functionality and it's free. It's also very easy to install and it's just like the last install we just did, but it only requires one additional step, which is just grabbing the URL link from my video description, or you can get it from their GitHub repository, which is literally the same thing because the link is actually the repository with .git at the end. So just grab it from my video description. And if you want to see more information about this tool, just go ahead and click on the link instead of copying the link. So copy the link for the Yako Livera Photopea. It's always weird names. And then so get that extension link in my video description. You could right click on it, then copy it, then head over to Stable Diffusion and click on install from URL and then paste that link that you just copied into the URL for extensions Git repository and then click on the big orange install button. As always, don't worry about the local directory. It's going to create itself in your extensions folder. So that's going to happen by default. Then go to your extension sub tab, 
name installed and then make sure that everything is check marked and then go ahead and check for updates by clicking on the big check for updates button now click on apply and restart and just like that you have a photo editor inside your stable diffusion it's wild it's a pretty powerful tool so now when you click outside you should see a photopea tab you know what i've been saying photopea all this time, but I think it's photo P. If it's photo P, I'm sorry. I know, I know it might annoy you. Photo P, photo P. Anyways, if you don't see the tab or you, if you have issues or errors after you installed it, just go ahead and copy the error in your web UI user dot bat command prompt. And then you can just save that for your own reference and then just restart it. Just go ahead and close it all the way out and start it again. Most of the time, about like 99% of the time, that's going to fix it. But if it doesn't just go ahead and put your error in the comment section and we'll just try to see if we can figure it out together. All right, so now let's jump into Photopea and check out some cool stuff. This is the full version of Photopea basically, and it sends you directly to their site via an iframe tag. And no, that's not like iframe, like the game Dark Souls or World of Warcraft or Black Desert Online, and I hate that game. An iframe tag is kind of like an embedding, but in this case, they're embedding a whole site instead of a video. Now I'm kind of oversimplifying it, but this is basically what's happening here. Speaking of iframes, you can actually adjust the iframes in your stable diffusion because it's not going to be the right size by default. You might see some black bars, but there's actually a slider that you can move to kind of make it adjust it to your, your monitor, especially if you have like an ultra wide like I do. This tool is pretty advanced, so it has a healing tool, it has a dropper, you can crop in here, you have a magic select tool, you can burn and dodge, you can actually use the layers button here, you can do channels. So it has a lot of advanced features where you can do some pretty nice edits here. You can change the color of things where it doesn't just look like paint over something, it'll look like it was the actual color. So you can like change the color of eyes and stuff like that. You can work with layers, so you can actually add textures between the layers. And if you see here, I just clicked on file, new, and then they have a bunch of templates here so you can actually make a thumbnail so i could just click on that and here we go we can work on this and add some text to it so if you had a youtube channel this would be a good place to actually create a thumbnail we're just going to go over some simple features like how to extend the canvas as well as how to separate the background from the character because those are two things that would be very useful for stable diffusion the next thing to note is that the middle mouse button will allow you to drag it around the screen like this. So just press that in to grab it. And then when you hold Alt and scroll up, you can get really close to it. So I can get this close where I can see a bunch of pixelation. Use the middle mouse button to drag it over. Then I could do something like click on the heel tool and start kind of trying to get rid of these smudges and stuff. All right, so let's extend the canvas. So go ahead and go into image, choose canvas size, and we're gonna make the width twice as long as the height. So 1024, press enter. Now we have all this extra canvas canvas that we can work with and outpaint with. But well, that looks terrible, so we gotta fix that. So go ahead and go into the layers button right here. And if you have a lock icon, you can just go ahead and click on it to unlock it. Then go into edit and then click on free transform. Now we can grab the background and move it, which is another layer here. And then we could kind of adjust it to the canvas size. Whatever we wanna do, we could do the same with the picture as well. But um, but if you're not used to working with layers, make sure you select the layer first and make sure you're on the select tool and then unlock the layer and edit and transform again, it's not going to transform the whole thing. It's not going to free transform the whole thing. So you got to do it layer by layer, unless there's a way I don't know about. So right now the, the ratio is locked. That's fine because we wanted this extra space here, right? Now you can inpaint something into this blank space if this is what you're trying to do. And something to take note of is that you can actually click on the border and then scroll down. Make sure you're clicked on the border. If you're inside, you're just going to move the picture around. Click on the border and then it's a little finicky. Scroll down and choose active layer only and then send to image to image. And if you wanted to inpaint, send it to inpaint. Then you can do the mask in that empty section. Click fill, click interrogate, click on get width, or make sure the width and height matches your photo right here by sliding this. Choose the denoising strength you want, then click generate. As you can see, it filled in that area just like as we would without painting. But it's a new image now that doesn't have the rock. Let me take out the mask to remind you what it looked like. Now I want to show you a really cool tool called Magic Cuts. So just go ahead and clear your image. You can just press the refresh button here at the top and refresh the page to get rid of everything and start new. Click on Photopea again, and I'm going to drag my picture in here. Now for this to work, you actually have to be clicked on the image. I'm already clicked on the image, so no problem there. Now I'm going to go into Select. I'm going to choose Magic Cut. Now we have three colors here. Green is to keep, gray is to erase, and then red is for the background. I want to keep the character, so I'm going to click on the green button and just draw like a line right through her. As you can see, she popped up 
and you can just kind of put little dots here. If you get something like that, just press Control Z. Then you can actually select red and remove the background. I'm just going to put a dot right there and the background is gone. Now it's not perfect. There's some shadowing here. You could just kind of keep working with it till you get it right. So I'm going to click on green again, try to add a little bit more of her into the picture. There we go. The background is gone and it was pretty easy. So now I can click on OK and then select that layer. Click on the border and scroll down and make sure it's my active layer. Then I could send it to image to image control net. Now it's going to use control net without anything in the background. So control net's not going to look at anything in the background. It's just going to look at her pose right now. And that's very important when you're trying to get a clean image without a bunch of stuff that you didn't want in the background. All right, that's it. I just wanted to show you the canvas zoom tool. And I also thought you could use this photo P tool and sorry for calling it photo I'm still not sure which one's right. I plan to do some tutorials with photo to go a little bit deeper and to do some image editing in there. To take a photo from image to image or your text to image and throw it into Photopea and then do some functional changes to it. I want to use the blur tool. I want to transfer textures and change color or do some color degrading and also just change things about the character like the color of their skin, the color of their hair and make it look a lot nicer than taking a chance with what Stable Diffusion might give you. This is a great way to get a little bit more control out of fine changes on your character. I'm going to end this video with an older tutorial, which was just kind of like a music video of me changing the color of eyes and lips and gimp. So uh, just check that out as well. It's a bit older, but still relevant. If you like this video, please leave a like and uh, thanks for watching. Bye.
face!